Over is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also Wrestling Observer. I, can't, I still can't see Mike. Mm -hmm. I'm giving up That's at this right. point. It's okay. I hate it. I actually had to talk about Jim Crockett Jr. as a giraffe, but... Uh, well, fix hey. your camera then, buddy. Dude, obviously you're trying to do that, okay? I'm trying to not let your camera through? What? I said I'm trying to do that, oh, okay? I said I was trying to do it. Like I was no, to not you. everything's about you, Brian. Well, I can make it all about me. Let me tell you about it these, is always about you. these shows these weekend, this past weekend. Oh. SmackDown and Castle Attack. I'll talk about one of those. I'll talk about them both. SmackDown, yeah. this is the worst show. I, I hate this show. <laughs> God, I'm like... All I want is like a show with like a lot of talented people that it makes sense and like it makes me want to see future Matt. That's all I want. Am I asking too much? Well, you got talented people. They it's did the, the absolute stuff. stupidest angle, one of them last night. And I don't care what Dave says about count out leading to a cage. Like, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Not Listen. There. So they open the show is Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. And Daniel Bryan. <laughs> that's. I don't even know where to begin. It's like a waste of my time. Daniel Bryan is mad because he agreed to a match where if he won the Elimination Chamber, he would face Roman Reigns. He won the Elimination Chamber, he faced Roman Reigns and got beaten in a minute. Now he's mad. Hey, he's upset that the match wasn't later on in the show. Alex, like, what a crybaby baby face. So then he's like, I want a match against you at Fastlane. So Roman's like, bro, I beat you. And then Jey Uso jumps in, and they get arguing back and forth. And so what they do is they tell us about a match that they never announced, okay? They tell us that the Fastlane main event was supposed to be Edge and Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. Since when? Like, this was never announced, but now it's part of the storyline, okay? So... Daniel Bryan wants a match with Roman Reigns. Jey Uso gets involved, and they agree that Jey Uso will face Daniel Bryan in the main event, and if Daniel Bryan wins, he gets Roman Reigns to fast lane. Fine. Okay? Fine. Then they have to make it even more stupid. Now we go backstage, and now Roman Reigns is mad that he's not getting the tag team match that they never announced. Okay? He doesn't want a singles match with Daniel Bryan. He tells Jey Uso... Go take care of this guy. Make sure that we don't have this singles match at Fastlane. Jey Uso says okay. Then Edge shows up, okay? This is the same Edge who was going backstage all last week and telling every single one of those guys, if you beat Roman Reigns, boy, I'd be happy to face you at WrestleMania. Well, now this week he's angry. What do you mean Daniel Bryan might get a championship match at Fastlane? I won the Royal Rumble. So, I wasn't going to ask Eddie this one, but bro, Eddie, are we supposed to cheer or boo Edge? Because now this guy's coming off as a cry. Now you care that somebody else is getting a shot at Roman Reigns before you? You didn't care a week ago. All you did last week was tell everybody, hey, if you beat Roman Reigns, I'd be happy to face you at WrestleMania. Well, now he's angry. I can't believe I won the Royal Rumble and Brian might get a match at Fastlane. So he's all, he's all bitter and he's angry and he goes off. So Don't. we build to the big match in the main event. It is Daniel Bryan versus Jey Uso. If Daniel wins, he gets a match at the Fastlane pay-per-view. Roman has made it clear to Jey Uso, make sure this guy doesn't make it to Fastlane. So these two dudes are wrestling and they tumble out of the ring and they're not paying attention and they get counted out. Now, I knew before this that they were leading to a cage match. So I thought, well... All right, fine. Roman doesn't want a singles match. Roman's clearly going to cost Daniel Bryan the match. This will lead to a cage match next week. Fine. No, they couldn't even do that. It's a count out. Okay? Now, Dave argues last night on the board, well, a count out is a perfectly logical reason to have a cage match. Well. Listen, if I am facing Mike, all right, and I'm the challenger, God forbid Mike somehow is the champion, and, yeah. and Mike keeps walking out because he doesn't want to lose his title. And Mike Blair gets and himself counted out. He runs away. Yeah, totally. that would make sense for a cage match. But if me and this dummy are outside the ring not paying attention, we both get counted out. <laughs> How in God's name does that lead to a cage match? Well, anyway, whatever your argument is, whether that made sense or not, 
That's not why they're having a cage match. They're having a cage match because on Talking Smack, Roman Reigns offered Daniel Bryan a rematch against Jey Uso in a cage. What? <laughs> this doesn't make a lick of sense. It was so dumb, it was so nonsensical, and it played throughout the entire show. So, yeah, I... I, I I mean, we can get into Sasha Banks, who I think is supposed to be a babyface. Is actually why I want Eddie to call in. There's no way they want her to be a babyface. You know She's they want her to the be a babyface. the most... Un- you know what? You want know how unlikable Sasha is as a babyface? I couldn't even unlikable. believe this when I saw it. She's so unlikable that on the same show, Baron Corbin is a better babyface than Sasha Banks. And he's a heel. And also, he's Baron Corbin. He's still a better baby face than Sasha. <laughs> I didn't even give him, we didn't have time last night, but Dave told me that he liked the show. I was like, what did you like about it? Okay, there was one good thing, and that is Apollo Crews' angry Nigerian. And somebody on the board was like, oh, I can't believe, Brian, you have faith in their storytelling of this. I didn't say anything about the storytelling. I said, Apollo Crews has been fantastic the past two weeks. He's great. Now, will they screw this up? Yeah, they probably will. But the the good news is he's feuding with Big E, who's injured. So I think that he's got at least a few more weeks because we got to at least get through this one before they can totally screw the guy up. But right now, Apollo Crews was the best thing. He was the best thing on the SmackDown show. And if you'd like to argue that there's anything else good on SmackDown, I want to hear it. Knock yourself out. Seth Rollins doing the most boring... Everyone's like, I was so happy to see Cesaro beat up Seth Rollins. You were happy because Seth Rollins is doing the lamest gimmick that he's been doing for six months now that is go-away heat. So yeah, of course you're going to cheer that he's got swung by the guy. But I would prefer if he wasn't a horrible character. I would prefer if I didn't want to turn the channel when he came on. What was good about this show? Anybody? I didn't and even then, watch it. and you know what? I'm not going to based off this description at all. And then, now I'm going to have to probably deal with you, Mike. Why? Are you going to tell you me how awesome the great O'Con is? How? Oh, he's the next Jay White. I heard that one last night. He's the well, next Jay White. You guys are all dorks. Every single one of you. Everybody are. What do you mean, every so- one of you? Because I'm on the other side. I think that he is at best, at best, slightly below average. Look, everybody that is arguing so hard over this is just ridiculous in my eyes, okay? Try to be somewhat pragmatic about this. Nobody is expecting the great Okan. Nobody should have expected him to come back and be like IWGP champion material. You know, he is supposed to be coming along, and that's why they have him working with the guys that he's working with. Adam Summers and I did a big audio nightmare today, and while we were talking about this situation, it kind of hit me. It reminds me a lot about Makabe and the change that they decided to make with Makabe way back when he became the chain-swinging crazy man and some of the reaction that that got. Maka who? Say what? Did he live up to this this potential that I guess you're telling me that people thought he had? Togi Makabe? Togi Makabe ended up was that the IWGP champion with this gimmick that he ended up going with. But there were a lot of comparisons that I would make to the the comments that I'm hearing where it, it's like give this thing a little bit of a chance. He was brought in to be a mid Carter. He was brought in to be a heater for Will Ospreay. He was brought in to be a mouthpiece doing these crazy interviews. And yes, it's a throwback sort of gimmick. It's a very gimmicky gimmick, which you're not used to seeing. And frankly, when it comes to evil and some other people that they've had, you know, again, evil was actually going pretty good and people liked his gimmick for a while, but they've been doing, when you do a gimmick like you're doing with Okan, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time for people to get used to it and for him to get used to being in the game. But I don't think that he comes with handles like a lot of other people do where he's got to be carried so heavily. Look, Tanahashi is great. 
and Ocon is not yet. But relax, he's a mid card guy. These guys. Just... Ocon had a good match with Tanashi. I should hope so, dude. Exactly. But that's he's there to serve a purpose. Why people are getting people have now worked themselves into a frenzy, and it's like AEW and 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 NXT ratings, and it's like the awards and everything else where people have got to they stop thinking about this from a pragmatic point of view and thinking about the future of things and immediately have to fight over everything. Wado was a great example. Wado was brought back to be a mid-card guy who you're, he wasn't brought back to be a superstar in the junior heavyweight division, but people already like staked a referendum on him and how much Wado sucks. The same thing was Okan. And as much as people then start to inflate him up, then people start to have to shout those people down and talk about how stupid they are. And it's like, the whole conversation is stupid. Look at Osprey, Cobb, and Okan in that whole group and how they're moving that thing forward. It, it's just, I don't know. I, I, well, to let's me, be I fair. can't get that fired up over it, and it's kind of ridiculous let's because be it's fair. like it's not fair to Okan. Let me be fair about this, okay? I never said Montmaster Watto sucked. I said his gimmick sucked. I actually no, think Great Okan has a good gimmick, but I think he sucks. There's a big difference between <laughs> these two. Mike is so embarrassed to have to be on here next to my handsome face that he can't get his camera working. Oh, yeah, it looks <laughs> great there, Mike. Oh, wow. Yeah. A big, is that what it is? A big brown square. Is that, <laughs> that's You know what? You probably got one of those in your pants right now. You know, it, that's what, apparently why you decided to shave. Everybody's been heckling you so bad. Oh, now the whole thing is brown. Well, <laughs> What's going on probably, here? Again, also probably like your pants. I don't we go. know. There's, is this technology that you sent me? You're, you're a on. giraffe today. Am I? Yeah, it was really hard. It was really advanced technology. You plug it in. <laughs> well, that's the problem here. I don't know what's going on here. I don't understand what this issue is. Well, anyway, yes, I did shave everybody, and I had planned to continue growing my pandemic beard until I got vaccinated. Then I was going to shave everything. I was going to shave my head. I was going to shave my face. But I ran into a minor issue. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. I have a wife. <laughs> She's not a fan. Well, I've done a lot of horrible things with my hair and my, my face throughout my lifetime, and she's she's gone with i mean there's nothing that she has put her foot down on and there was one exception and that was when i shaved my head about eight years ago she was like i'm not into the whole shaved head thing buddy so i grew my hair back and my beard was so horrible okay it was so <laughs> horrible that she got to the point where she said even if you're gonna shave your head that's fine. Just please shave that beard. And you know what she actually said? This what? I almost said a really bad word here on the air. <laughs> so uh, I I was I posted some picture on Twitter, and this MJF made some comment about I don't know if I can say this on the air, but I, I presume I can. That I had pubes glued to my face. Short hairs. No, I actually see. Actually, said pubes. I know. And it was it was the other day when when my wife did in fact say to me that. I forget the exact comment. It was something like, that guy that said something about pubes on your face, he's not wrong. <laughs> At that point, it was like, I, I just can't do this anymore. So anyway, we worked very hard, and we got my mother, my father, her mother, and her father fully vaccinated both shots. Hey. And so even if it wasn't me, you know what? We took care of both sides of our family. So I figured, and it's my daughter's fifth birthday today, and she doesn't want her... She doesn't want me to be her grandfather. She wants me to be her father. So I shaved and such is life. I almost shaved my head, but then I was like, wait a second. No. It's not going to happen right now. Maybe this summer. Maybe when the sun's out. You got to tan that thing, absolutely. Yeah, I'm not ready yet. I'm actually not this pale, but all this stuff right here just makes me look much paler than I am. So I don't want to look like, uh, um, was it Powder? Was that old movie? Yes, Powder. But that guy that was really pale? Yes. Yeah, I didn't want to look like Powder. I well, got enough problems. How about, got enough how about problems. the Mulkies? What about him? Well, did you, you could look like Randy and Bill Mulkey. You kind of wrestled like him. The Mulkies weren't bald. No, but they were pale as hell. Well, sure, they were pale, but, I mean, what does that do with the, baldness? The whitest of the white. Just you with that white-ass head if you were to shave it now and not have a tan. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. 
Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.